There are various iconic styles that exist within the expansive history of railroading around the world. These designs depend on the terrain and purpose of each locomotive, as some are designed for hauling heavy freight through rough terrains, while others are made for pulling high speed or local passenger trains for long distances. However, few locomotives in railroading history are able to combine two varying styles of locomotive designs over the span of its career. Furthermore, locomotives which are converted for a different purpose rarely stand out as a result of this as they almost go unnoticed by many. But every once in a while, the locomotive is able to stand out by its unique design and for its overlooked status as of one of a kind. The story of this locomotive goes back long before streamlining was introduced to the United States. It's the turn of the 20th century, and another style of locomotive design is sweeping the region. Camelbacks, or locomotives with their cabin to serve the boiler due to their large firebox blocking visibility, are being used by almost every northeastern railroad for almost every purpose. Around this time, more people are commuting to New York City from neighboring suburbs in New Jersey, and there are more commuter rail services being run by a wide variety of power. One of the largest commuter providers in the New Jersey to New York region is the Delaware, Lackawanna, and Western Railroad, which also operates a large amount of camelbacks for local trips to Hoboken. At the same time, the railroad also runs through the Pocono Mountains and through hilly terrain all the way to Buffalo, and strong locomotives are required to keep a steady pace. Camelbacks were the perfect answer for this kind of service, since they had the Watson Firebox, which was built to run on cheap anthracite coal waste, or calm something that the Northeast had a large amount of, and was one of the main goods transported by freight roads such as the Lackawanna. After seeing the success of the Camelbacks on the Reading Railroad, the Lackawanna began a large purchase of Camelback locomotives in various wheel arrangements, including 440s for commuter service due to their low drivers and low boiler heating surface to great area ratios. The 440s were classified as the G class, with most of them being built by Alco. The locomotive to be focused on is no exception, as G3B class number 988 was built in Schenectady towards the beginning of the Camelback Order in 1902. Upon entering service, 988 and other 440s of its class were often used for suburban service to Hoboken, as well as intercity runs in upstate New York to towns such as Syracuse. These locomotives and others in the Camelback family thrived in passenger service since they produced little steam while using hard coal at smooth and quick speeds and most of their weight was also balanced as the firebox and cab were placed directly over the driver wheels, thus giving them a high tractive effort. However, with such benefits of the Camelback's design also came numerous flaws. One of the most noticeable is the separation of the driver and the fireman in two different cabs, as well as the fireman being exposed to the elements. Meanwhile, the main cab was placed directly above the driver wheels and side rods, which made the ride for the driver uncomfortable and put him in danger in the event of a driver wheel failure. This gave these locomotives the name Snappers, for the risk of a side rod snapping off and going right through the cab. Considering the safety hazards of these locomotives, production was banned by the Interstate Commerce Commission by the late 1920s as the nation looked towards a new style of locomotive design. Streamliners soon dominated the passenger trains of Class 1s across the nation in order to compete against rivaling automobiles and airplanes with style. The Lackawanna was no exception to this trend, as four of their newer N-Class Pacifics gained a semi-streamlined appearance in 1936 with green wings and silver outline, as they were assigned to fast mainline passenger trains throughout the railroad. At the same time, the Lackawanna was in the process of either retiring or rebuilding the remaining Camelbacks, most of which were already too old to be rebuilt and were scrapped. Of the 65 Camelbacks in the G2 through G5 class, only 7 were rebuilt for further service five of which with a single cab which gave them the look of a modern 440. 988 was the last 440 to be rebuilt with a single cab, but it was given a semi-streamlined shrouding for unknown reasons as it became one of few streamlined locomotives on the Lackawanna. With this modification during a time where larger locomotives were dominating the rails, 988 not only became the lone streamlined 440 on the rail's roster, but it also became the lone streamlined 440 in the world. Even with the streamlining, the locomotive continued to stay loyal to its Hoboken-based suburban service as an increasingly rare example of steam under the wires, although it was once spotted leading the Lackawanna Hudson. Other than its suburban origins, 988 could also be seen on the railroad's Utica branch from Binghamton to Utica, New York quite frequently, usually pulling a few passenger cars for local service. However, 
This streamlined glory wouldn't last for long as a combination of newer diesels and declining ridership on shorter routes sidelined the few remaining smaller steam locomotives on the Lackawanna. With little use left for this streamlined 440, the NLW 988 was scrapped in 1946. Thankfully, the memory of this unique locomotive is kept alive through photographs of its original and streamlined forms, as well as a minimum gauge replica at the Steamtown National Historic Site at the same town where 988 was rebuilt. Even if the story of this almost unknown locomotive is a bit short, it still managed to outlive most Camelbacks and gained an unexpected unique status of being the world's only streamlined 440. Thank you all for watching this episode of Remarkable Engines. This locomotive stands out in the history of Northeastern railroading as it represents a popular type of locomotive among the Antrakite railroads, as well as the style of aerodynamics which is considered unusual for such a small locomotive for local service. Now, some may point out that 988 shared the title of being the streamlined 440 with Southern Railway 999, originally 935 Seven Oaks, but this shrouding was experimental and was never used in revenue service. There are also a few early streamlined French 440s with the design known as wind splitting, which were produced around the same time as 988's construction, but the extent of its appearance being considered streamlined can be debated. The 440 wheel arrangement is one of the first style of locomotives used en masse in the US and is often associated with the brass large funneled locomotives of the Wild West. By the time the G3 class was built, 440s or Americans have already been outpowered by stronger wheel arrangements such as the 460s and 462s which limited 440s for suburban service where strong tractive effort wasn't needed. The last thing anyone expected was for a steam locomotive with an outdated Camelback design and an outdated wheel arrangement to be streamlined for another decade of high-speed inner-city service. Thank you again for watching, credit for all the photos used go to their respective photographers, and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more. Have a good day.